Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to find your purpose. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to find your purpose. And we have a video that was sent in and I'm gonna go ahead and play it for you and then we're gonna dive into answering her question. Hi, my name is Carmen. I am 52 years old and I am having a difficult time finding my purpose. Um, my children are grown out of the house and uh, I have a fiance, I have many hobbies, but one of my passions is photography. I would love to travel and take pictures and tell a story. Um, and I would love nothing more but to help other individuals um, that are my age that might be struggling doing the same thing. All right. Well, thank you for sending that in. And uh, we're going to dive into how to find your passion. I'm going to give you two separate ways that you can find your passion. Uh, one of the ways I'm actually going to give you, uh, actually, I just got last night from a conversation that I had with my friend Jay Shetty, who's going to be on the podcast uh, in the next month or so, whenever that episode does come out. And we actually spoke about how to find your passion. So I'm going to give you two separate ways. One way that he actually gave me that we were talking about last night, and then the other one's going to be something completely different. So the first way that you can find your passion is this way. Uh, ask yourself a couple different questions and I'm going to go over these questions with you. And if you want to pause me, pause the video, pause the podcast, whatever it is, you can write them down, journal through them and start to try to find the answers to this. Because one of the most common questions that I get is how do I find my passion? And so the first question that I want you to write down or start to think about is what are you really good at or what are you dying to learn? So that's one question. What are you really good at or what are you dying to learn? And so the reason why is because if you're really good at something, there's a pretty good chance that you could teach other people to become really good at it. Because if you really love something, there's other people in the world, no matter how weird and obscure that thing might be, there's other people in the world who want to get better at that something. So what are you really good at or what are you dying to learn? Because if you're obsessed with something, with learning something, with wanting to get better at it, you're going to eventually get really good at it. So what you wanna find out is what are you really good at and start to think about that. And then what are you dying to learn? So if you're sat out there, you're like, I'm not good at anything. You know, I've spent, I went to college right after college. I went directly into a company and I've been spending the last 20 years of the company. I'm not really good at anything. Well, good. What are you dying to learn? Are you dying to learn how to ride horses? Are you dying to learn, you know, how to uh, understand psychology? Are you dying to learn, you know, synchronized swimming? What is it that you're dying to learn? Something that you could read about, something that you could go to a conference for, something that you could talk to someone about for three hours, something that you could watch documentaries about all day long, something you could read books about. Because when you're obsessed with something, something that you're dying to learn, it doesn't even feel like work when you're trying to learn whatever that thing is. It just feels like you're in flow. It feels like something that you were born to do. And so you want to figure that out. What are you really good at right now? Or what are you dying to learn? If you go back to what are you really good at, you could be really good at coding. Maybe you went to college, you learned coding and you're really good at it. Maybe you're really good at Facebook ads. Maybe you're really good at marketing. Maybe you're really good at business and you could teach other people business or consult. There's a lot of different things. And here's the thing that, that that's really usually the biggest challenge for most people is what you're best at the world at, you usually don't even realize because it's so natural to you. So what do you just, what just comes so easily to you in the world? Think about that thing or what are you just dying to learn? What are you obsessed with learning? If you had all the time in the world, all the money in the world, what would you still be learning and reading? What books would you read about? What documentaries, what conferences would you go to if you had all of the money in the world? So that's the first question that has to deal with that. The second question is how could you use it in the service of others? How could you use it in the service of others? One of the things that I think is incredible uh, that he said was this, is your passion becomes your purpose when you use it in the service of others. Your passion becomes your purpose when you use it in the service of others. Because you can be really passionate about something and you can be great at it but it might not be your purpose in life. And that's something that you really need to realize is most people think that their passion and their purpose are the same thing. Your passion is just something that you absolutely love and you're obsessed with. How could you use it in the purpose of others? Let me give you an example. Let's say you're really good at riding horses. Let's say that you're, that's the, answer to the first question. You're either really good at it or you're just dying to learn how to get better at horses. How could you use that in the service of others? Well, I'm not saying you have to become a millionaire at your passion or purpose, but 
you know, you could say, all right, I work a normal nine to five job on my days off. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to become obsessed with learning and getting better at riding horses. And then within the next couple of years, I'm going to start using therapy horses to help people who have mental illnesses or disabilities. And that could be your passion turning into your purpose. One of the things that I think a lot of people don't really dive into and start to think about is that your purpose in life doesn't have to be the thing that makes you money. And that's what usually stresses a lot of people out. They think my purpose and my passion have to be the thing that put money in my bank account. No, no, no. What's something that you could, you know, you could have a normal job that's fulfilling and it might not be something that you're incredibly in love with, but it pays the bills and it gives you a lot of free time to go out and live your purpose. Think about that. So the two questions, what are you really good at? Or what are you dying to learn? Write it down, think about that, journal that for a little while. And the second one is how can you use that in the service of others? Because then that takes your passion and turns it into your purpose. So that's the first exercise that you can use to find your passion. The second exercise that you can use to find your passion, you may have heard me talk about it on this podcast before, uh, probably about a year or so ago, but I'm gonna say it again because it works all the time. It's called Ikigai. Ikigai is a, uh, a Japanese phrase they've been using for hundreds of years. And it basically translates to reason for being, like your reason for being, your reason for being alive is your Ikigai. And your Ikigai comes down to four questions. And if you could figure out a way to just turn your brain off and not worry about making money or I can't do that or this isn't something I could do and you can just be four years old again and just allow yourself to dream for 20 minutes. You know, when you're four years old, you could be an astronaut, you could be a fireman, you could be a princess, you could be anything. Allow yourself to be four years old for 20 minutes as you journal through these four questions. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. The first one, what do you love? And you just make lists. Don't even worry about it. everything. You could put pizza down. You could put sunsets. You could put playing with kids, riding horses, cars. Write down every single thing that you love, podcasts, the New York Giants, Tampa Bay Bucks, Tom Brady, whatever it is, just put as many things as you possibly can. Try to get to like 50 to 100 things. What do you love? And you just write every single thing. Puppies, you know, cats, whatever it is that you love. And you just write down every single thing. Don't worry about how can it make me money? How can I turn this into my purpose? How can I make sure that this is the thing that fulfills me for the rest of my life? Don't worry about that. All you have to worry about is what do you love in every little teeny tiny thing all the way up to the biggest things. You know, it could go from sunsets to your children, whatever it is, what do you love? And if you need to go ahead and pause me as you fill out everything that you love. Second thing, what are you good at? Okay. Just make a massive list of everything that you're good at. Good at driving, good at drawing, good at writing articles, whatever it is. What are you good at? Maybe you're good at public speaking. Maybe you're good at teaching. Maybe you're good at making people laugh. What are you good at? Just write down as many things as you possibly can think of that you are good at. Once again, if you need to, pause me. If you're driving, think about it. Pause me for a minute. Go ahead and think about that for a few minutes. What are you good at? Next one, what can you be paid for, right? What can you be paid for? And once again, if it's not something that you can be paid for, what is something that you could do that could get you paid for this later on down the road. So maybe you have a day job. Once again, like I said, you have a day job and you want to get really good at coding, for instance. You know, you have just a normal day job. You're an account manager. You want to get really good at coding. So you spend your nights and your weekends getting good at coding. What could you be good at? What you could, could you be paid for? You could be paid for Uber. You could be paid for being a teacher. You could be paid for public speaking. You'd be paid for, you know, Facebook ads, advertising. What could you be paid for? Just make a massive list of everything that you could be paid for, whether it's right now or something that you could learn, a skill that you could develop over the next year or two or three years that you could be paid for that skill, no matter how small it might seem or no matter how large it might seem. Think about that. What could you be paid for? And then the last question that deals with this is what does the world need? What does the world need? This is once again where it flips from passion 
over to purpose. What does the world need from you? What does the world need more of? The world needs more compassion. The world needs more people that are helping each other. The world needs more recycling. The world needs more uh, less plastic straws. So whatever you would put in the pla- place of plastic straws, uh, brass straws, glass straws, who knows? Just what does the world need? Maybe the world needs to be more aware of what we're doing to the environment. Maybe uh, the world needs a better leader. I don't know. Whatever it is that you think, what does the world need? So those are the four questions. What do you love? What are you good at? What could you be paid for? And what does the world need? And what you try to do is you try to see if you can find certain things in all of those lists that you have that overlap in some sort of ways. And I wish I would have known about Ikigai years ago because I would have been doing this podcast and making videos and putting them on YouTube and all that stuff years and years and years before I actually started. But if you look at it and I look at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, if I would have there's a pretty good chance I would have known this is exactly what I want to do had I done Ikigai years ago. What do I love to do? I love public speaking. I love making videos. I love uh, editing. I love recording. I had this mic. You know, if you're looking at watching the, the, the video of this, I had this mic before I started the podcast because I was recording music. This is when, the one I was using for actual music recording. Uh, what do I love? You know, and, and it's, uh, I love personal development. I love teaching people. I love being on stage. I love public speaking. I love all of those things, right? I would have known, okay, I got those. And there would have been a hundred other things that I would have loved in there as well. What am I good at? I feel like I'm pretty good at teaching. I feel like I'm pretty good at taking something that's very complex and making it easy for people to understand. I'm pretty good at speaking. Um, I'm pretty good at uh, making people laugh. I'm pretty good at you know, some editing that I do. I'm pretty good at you know making sure that the lighting looks pretty decent whenever I'm recording something. That's something that I'm good at. Okay, what can I be paid for? I could be paid for teaching people. I could put out videos and, and uh, podcasts and have ads be paid in there. And so you start to see what I'm, what I'm getting at here. What could I be paid for? Okay, I could be paid for going and speaking on stage. I could be paid to write a book. I could be paid for making courses. I could be paid for helping people improve their mindset. And what does the world need? The world needs a lot more help with their mindset, more compassion, uh, people working on themselves, people being more self-aware. And so if I would have done Ikigai years ago, I would have started circling these things and gone, huh, I bet if I were to try to actually teach the stuff that I'm learning, what I'm obsessed with, personal development, early, you know, uh, child psychology, neurology, uh, early childhood development, all of those things, I'm passionate about that. And that's something that I'm dying to learn. You know, going back to the very first question, that's something that I'm dying to learn. Even if I don't get paid for it, I still geek out of those types of things. And I could have looked at that and gone, oh my gosh, if I look at this, I could get really good at, you know, psychology, mindset, early childhood development, uh, understanding people, neurology. I, I could teach it. How could I teach it? I could teach it through video. I could teach it through podcasts. I could teach it through other formats. I could teach it from stage. What should I do? Oh my gosh, I should become a speaker. I should get my message out there. And I would have figured it out years and years and years ago. But now with me giving you that example, you can see the overlap and how looking back now, I can see the overlaps of if I would have done this years ago, I would have definitely been able to go, yeah, I should start a podcast. I should start a YouTube. I should start a Facebook, Instagram. I should be speaking from stage more, whatever it is. And the last resort that I'll give you is this. If you really can't figure out what it is that you want from your life, what it is that you should be doing, for the next 30 days, every single day, what I want you to do is I want you to sit down and meditate for 10 minutes in the morning. If it's really, truly something that you're passionate about to find, if you're passionate about finding your purpose, then get serious and do this every single day for the next 30 days. And you meditate and you close your eyes and you do 60 breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. You center yourself and you just repeat to yourself, I want to know what my purpose is. I want to know what my purpose is. I want to know what my purpose is. And what you're doing is you're setting your brain, you're setting your reticular activating system to be on search for that thing all day long. And you'll start to notice people, places, opportunities, things coming into your life that are identi- helping you identify why you were put on this earth. I want to know what I'm supposed to be here for. I want to know what my purpose is. I want to know what I'm passionate about. I want to know what I would love to do with my free time. One of the easiest ways, but often overlooked, to use your subconscious to help you throughout the day. And I always say, as you've heard me say before, if you listen to this podcast, it's okay to not know what your purpose is right now. It's okay to not know, but it's not okay to not be in constant search for what your purpose is every single day. 
Let me say that again. It's okay at this very moment to not know what your purpose is, but it's not okay to not be in constant search for what that purpose is. It's something that you should focus on every single day. You wake up every day, you breathe every single day. And if you're not doing something that you love to do, it's time for you to figure out what it is. Start to work at it as hard as you work at your day job, as hard as you work on yourself, as hard as you work at being a parent. Work on it, figure it out, because eventually, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, it might not be two weeks, it might be a year from now or two years from now, it might click and you might figure it out. And then the rest of your life will be doing something that you truly love. So when was the last time that you did that? When was the last time that you tried something new? When was the last time that you learned something new? Put yourself outside of your comfort zone and ask yourself and say it to yourself every single morning. I want to know what my purpose is. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. You have to live a fulfilled life, even if you make less. Because would you rather have your children be happy or successful.